Hi guys, welcome to the webinar. Uh, this is the first of four uh, webinars I'm going to do this week where I'm going to highlight my trade methodology using price patterns and uh, price recognition. Sorry, I had uh, I didn't realize I had my mic on mute here. So I'd love to give a shout out to everybody, but uh, we're literally going to have uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people on the webinar and uh, it's just not possible. But I want to thank you guys for all your support and uh, thanks for showing up. Hopefully you'll get a ton of value out of our time together. So please put your name and where you're from in the question box. Uh, even though I'm not going to acknowledge you personally, I'd just like to know, uh, just like to see where everybody's from. So I'll, I'll give this uh, two, three minutes to allow everybody to uh, check in. Um, God, we've got tons of people from all over the world, Sydney, Denmark, Greece, Tanzania, uh, Wisconsin, Toronto, Canada, uh, Vancouver Island, France, Montreal. Uh, so, God, you guys are just coming in so fast. Um, so, welcome everybody. I'll, I'll give everybody a chance to check in. Uh, you know, take another two, three minute break, and then we'll uh, we'll kick this off. So welcome everybody. Um, if you haven't already done so, please put your name and where you're from in the question box. I'll be kicking this off momentarily. Just want to give everybody enough chance to get on. We've got uh, over uh, 300 attendees currently and I expect many more um, over the next uh, few minutes. So just hang tight and we'll get started. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, we'll get started in just a moment. I just want to allow everybody a chance uh, to get on. If you haven't already done so, please put your name and where you're from in the question box. I'll give this another uh, two minutes and then we can get started. All right, we're almost up to 400 attendees.
and people are still actively checking in. So I'm just going to, I mean, give it 60 seconds and then we can get cracking. So Chris says lots of peeps. Yep. So a lot of people on this uh, session. So thanks everybody. Hopefully you can see my screen and hear me clearly. Uh, Chris, everyone's saying yes. So uh, if you can't, sometimes it's your browser. Uh, sometimes the Chrome browser does not interact well with the uh, GoToWebinar platform. So if at any time you have audio or video problems, it's probably on your end. There's nothing I can do. So uh, just check in with another browser if uh, you have uh, issues. All right, so why don't uh, why don't we get started? So uh, once again, to you know, welcome to this uh, four, first of four-day live trade execution training sessions. Where you know I'm going to go into the market live, show you uh, some of the trades I've done recently, show you uh, some of the trades I'm looking at. But you know whether they win or lose, really, what I'm trying to convey is a methodology um that i honed many decades ago so again for those of you who don't know me my name is mark shaws and the pattern trader i'll just give you a, a little bit of a, a background of my trading career i started uh more decades ago than i'd like to uh, acknowledge they're going by very quickly i was in uh, my junior senior year of um, business school i went to university of southern california one of the best business schools in the country and you know i was being you know honed in you know the, the tra traditional way of evaluating investments which we call fundamental analysis and i had a a great um uh you know financial uh, marketing and and um, you know trading uh teacher a guy named ken treffs he actually only took a dollar from the school because he was an independent millionaire and just wanted to give back and he was uh, one of the most memorable teachers i had one of the most memorable courses but he taught us to look at you know everything uh, through the prism of what we call fundamental analysis where you really rigorously break apart you know a company and look at the price earnings ratios and the sales inventory turnover and the management and you know things of that nature but about the same time that i was you know you know going to classes and wondering what the hell i was going to do with my life after college uh, my dad was doing business with a, uh, you know, very idiosyncratic character by the name of Graham Loving. And, uh, you know, couldn't make that name up. Great name, uh, Graham Loving. Uh, Graham was an investment banker that was helping my dad, you know, line up some funding for a drive through Animal Park. But um, at the same time, Graham was also actively trading the commodity futures markets. Now, this was in the late 1970s and this was the first time gold ran from almost nothing to a thousand the hunt brothers cornered the market and and, and ran silver to fifty dollars soybeans went over a thousand dollars pork bellies were running and graham was trading like 30 markets concurrently and making a fortune and it wasn't you know that he was able to you know make a, a lot of money that 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 intrigued me but it was how he was doing it so he did nothing more than, you know, go to the corner, you know, uh, uh, you know, pharmacy at the time. Remember, this was the time before the Internet, uh, before any kind of uh, fancy charting services. He'd get out a crude piece of graph paper and just plot an X and Y axis where he just plotted time and price. And, you know, every day he would just plot the closing price of like live hogs and pork bellies and orange juice and T-bond futures and, you know, 18 different markets. And, you know, he said to me, Mark, I just want to buy a market that's going up and sell a market that's going down. And, you know, for some reason, you know, I have a mind of a six year old. So it really appealed to me. And that was where my interest in what we call technical analysis was born. So, you know, I took the very crude rudimentary charts that, you know, Graham shared with me. And over time, I kind of, you know, built a, um, you know, a stage by stage you know, execution plan that gets me closer and closer to the bullseye of a, um, you know, of any trade. And so I, I apply my price action, price pattern trading methodology to, to almost any trading market. So I actively trade stocks. I actively trade, the, you know, the FX markets. I actively trade in gold. 
Uh, I was a commodities broker for 30 years and traded everything from live hogs to orange juice futures. And so the premise of what you know I try and convey is based simply on uh, you know a visual where I'm looking for a trend or a pattern. And then once I see a trend or a pattern, then I look for what I call an insurance day bar. And an insurance day bar is simply, you know, a bar that puts me, you know, that lets me understand that I'm, you know, in the momentum of the trade and also where and how to, uh, you know, evaluate my risk. And then once, you know, I've got all of that together, then I stage it with a an execution where I just put a buy stop or a sell stop. And, you know, I'll just share with you a couple of trades that, you know, I've done recently. So, you know, uh, as you guys know, I've been very high on the uh, British pound versus New Zealand dollar. It looks like nothing, you know, now, but I suspect, you know, it will look like something. So you can see this was a buy stop at 191.17. And this is, you know, what my daily newsletter uh, looks like. I'll tell you a little bit about, more about that at the end of this. Um, you know, every day I send this out and I try and show what I'm looking at in the chart where, and I'll blow this up on the real time chart. I saw the double bottom price pattern. Then I saw my insurance day bar in the form of a key reversal. And then I layered it with the buy stop, which was eventually triggered. And um, you can see, I, you know, I said pound New Zealand formed a double bottom, which is a bullish price pattern. So it indicates that we're now got a trajectory that's going to go higher. And then I look for what I call my um, insurance day bar, which is a, this, a key reversal where the market went lower, closed on the high of the day. And I said, you know, if any you know, penetration above that key reversal, we'll likely see uh, you know, more momentum to the upside. And, you know, that's exactly what we're starting to see. And then I frequently add to my trades. So here I said, you know, long pound New Zealand at 191.17, but I'm looking to add to my position. And so that's how I, you know, build trades. I'm not just in and out of trades every 10 minute looking for seven pips here or, or, or 15 pips there. You know, I'm looking for 300 pips on this trade, maybe 500 pips, maybe a thousand pips uh, on this trade. And I'll explain why. And so, you know, you can see here are some of my open positions in uh, Pound New Zealand as well as some others in gold. So, you know, I got in at 190.36, 192.17, 191.05, and I've got, uh, what does it look like, 40, I don't know, $90,000 in open profits uh, in Pound versus New Zealand. I'm also long the Pound versus the Yen, and I'm short gold and, you know, making uh, a few shekels in the markets. Uh, this is a... Uh, this was taken just uh, you know about an hour ago, so I'm making about 200,000 currently in the FX markets. Uh, recently, I've been also recommending to our members that they look at a stock called KTOS, which you know has a remarkable resemblance to the price chart of silver. I started buying it around the $30 price level, uh, uh, whatever this was two weeks ago, and I said uh, you know KTOS broke out of a long-term inverted head and shoulders price pattern, so you can see. Everything has a thesis to it. I look for an underlying you know, chart pattern that indicates what the future trajectory is. And then I just look for strategic locations to hop on board that trajectory. And I disclosed at the time that I was long uh, what I call call options, um, where I started buying it when the stock was around $28, the 32 and a half strike price, and uh, recently it went into the money. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, over the weekend, because of the price action, I recommended adding to the position of KTOS. Uh, and also recently, I've been very high on the stock of Lyft. You know, this has kind of been the second cousin to Uber, but somehow I really felt comfortable with the price action in Lyft and started really focusing on that stock. I've been alerting to my members to this for a couple of months now that there's going to be a huge move in Lyft. And that's what we're you know seeing right now, where I started buying it. Uh, under the $46 area, we're about trading about $58 right now, so we've gone up substantially. And I said Lyft has formed a massive double bottom bull price pattern on the near term and the multi-year time frames, any penetration above the inside bar. And I said I'm personally long, you know, the stock of Lyft and the call options. And um, so you can see this was last week. Uh, where the stock price was at 51. Right now it's around 58. I was long, you know, a lot of shares. I was also long the call options, which expired last week, and I made about 700% on these uh, $46 calls. I bought these $46 calls for about a dollar, and I blew them out for seven. Uh, and I bought the 47 call, 
dollar calls for about under two dollars and i blew them out for six six dollars so i made about 300 percent on that so you know sometimes when uh, you know i see a huge impending move you know i'll i'll bet the options not something that i recommend to you guys it's a very risky way of playing the market but as you can see this is the uh, current uh, open positions i have along the uh, ktos march uh, calls expiring what i really liked about these calls was that i had so much time when i was the stock was around 28 dollars when i was buying these calls for around a dollar you can see they're trading around 278 now so i've almost made 300 percent on my money but what i liked is that i've got so much time to sit in these calls and the company will announce earnings next week i think uh, february 22nd and you know hopefully it'll go uh, go my way we'll see if i even hang out that long i'm also long this week uh, more calls of lift which you can see i'm doing pretty nicely and then i'm uh, long the puts of bynd uh i bought these today and they doubled on me in in a day so um you know this is kind of what i do in the market so some people are saying they can't hear anything um are you guys hearing me okay yeah so some people are saying they're not so uh everyone's saying yes so i guess it's just a, a few all right so thank you for confirming that um so i just want to you know tell you that i eat my own cooking meaning that whatever trades I'm putting out to you guys, believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the, uh, the trades myself. And, uh, you know, so, um, you know, uh, they say, you know, most teachers can teach but can't uh, do anything else. You know, those who, you know, uh, can't teach and those who can, uh, you know, uh, whatever the saying goes. So um, I just wanted to kind of give you some street cred that, you know, I do actively trade these things. These are some of my low, you know, recent recommendations, and not all of my recommendations win, but you know, when they win, they win very big, uh, and when they lose, you know, I can I can control my risk very well. So, um, you know, I uh, I don't need to win more trades uh, than I lose because the size of my winning trades are so much bigger than the size of my losing trades. Um, so uh, with that said, I just want to kind of walk you through the market, show you why I, uh, you know, selected uh, some of those trades. And, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite trades. It's been on my radar for the last couple of weeks. In fact, I did a, a live session like this, a uh, four-day session, not too long ago. Maybe some of you guys were on there. And at the time, I said, you know, I was seeing this thing turn around, uh, but I didn't expect it to be a quick turnaround. And you can see that we're about a month beyond the time when the last time I did this. And um, you can see it's just starting to percolate. So, uh, you know, I started to see the signs of a turnaround a couple of weeks ago. And um, so I actually should have started with the weekly. Let me, um, let me go backwards and kind of put things into perspective. Um, so let me start, and this is what I do. You know, most traders are looking at 15-minute charts or hourly charts. You can see that, you know, I look at the uh, the monthly, the weeklies, and the dailies. So I want to get a perspective for what I'm looking at. I want to understand the cards I'm holding. And if you're looking at a 15-minute chart with some magic, you know, crossovers, really it's just a um, a random association because the market can go anywhere in the next 15 minutes and um, in fact I'll go to the 15 minute chart of the pound New Zealand yesterday it was just crazy um, but um, and I'll just demonstrate why you really can't trade so and you'll notice that you know I don't have any you know any magic in it there's no volume there's no Bollinger Bands there's no moving averages there's nothing on this chart but price and time so we call this a, a, a naked chart uh, because it's, you know, it doesn't have anything on it other than price and time. All I'm trying to do is get a snapshot, a picture. And from that picture, you know, I can understand a lot of what's going on. So, you know, this looks like a very difficult chart because basically over the last couple of years, it's gone up, down and everywhere and nowhere. So it's like, how can we tell, you know, how to hop aboard these trades? Well, what I try and do is hone in on the underlying patterns, what I call the governing price pattern. 
And in this time frame, in late 2016, early 2017, I saw this double bottom price pattern. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It makes one bottom, bounces off the bottom, retests the bottom. And then when we come through the neckline, which is simply a line drawn through the pattern, this basically is the green light. This is the confirmation. So you can see this M, I'm sorry, this W pattern um, or a double bottom. And now with the word bottom in it, it implies that tra the trajectory over time is going to be higher. And that's, you know, basically by and large what this thing has done in, you know, and then you have a rounding bottom here and uh, which both shared the resistance uh, of about the 180 price level. And that old resistance became new support. And then you saw this major bottom right here that, you know, led to an all time new high for many years. And now you see in the most recent time frame another little very subtle bottom percolating here. Now this little bottom looks exactly like the bottom did in the stock of Lyft when I was started buying it around $45 two, three weeks ago, where you see these two price bars close right at the low, but you know they were right in this double bottom you know, territory. So I'm always looking for this you know, pair to go higher because the governing price patterns. And what I mean by governing price pattern is that this price pattern here dictates what this thing is going to do over time. Now, there are whole kinds of times where this thing has sold off, you know, incredibly. And so I will take these, what I call counter trend plays. But by and large, when they sell off, I'm always looking to buy because the governing pattern tells me that over time, this is going to go higher. And then right here, you had what I call a key reversal where the market made a new low. And remember, this is a weekly bar. Each one of these, each bar represents one week in time. And then it closed at the high of the week. And then we had kind of a semi inside bar. You know, it snuck just outside the range. And, you know, I just uh, felt that if it got above here, then, you know, now we're, you know, going to go in this direction. And I'll now show you what I'm looking at on the daily chart a little bit closely. So, you know, I kind of, and basically this is, well, let me, let me just put on a little bit more time here. So for me, there were a number of things going on uh, on the daily chart pattern. And sometimes when a, a, a market doesn't go in one direction, for me, it just simply means that it's going to go in the other. So it's like simply, you know, what doesn't go down is going to go up. You know, not very sophisticated, uh, not, you know, very cerebral, but, you know, that's basically what, you know, it means. And so what I'm implying here is that we have this huge support area around the 190. And you can see this kind of looked at the time like a double top and a head and shoulders. You can't see the other shoulder in this time frame, but there was one. And so this was just a huge, what looked like a bear price pattern, meaning that once it confirmed and went through the neckline, which was just the line that you know ran through the entirety of the pattern, then we should have seen follow through. If that really was a bearish price pattern, then the market should have done that. And very often, you know, I have this internal conversation, you know, and I say, well, the market should be doing that. So, and but what is it doing? And you can see that, you know, it snuck under this neckline and then bit by bit you know it's been kind of going higher so we have what i call a bear trap where if you chase these lows now you're stuck and trapped and if you don't get out you know you're really going to be trapped and so this is uh you know has several things but really for me it was you know just observing the weekly pattern understanding that the long-term trajectory of this is in a stealth bull market you know, it bottomed out on those weekly, you know, prices around 167 and we're at 192 four years later. So it has in fits and starts been going higher. And now here you have this double bottom pattern that we saw on the, um, the weekly charts right here. And this was the pattern that I was observing, you know, about, you know, three, four weeks ago when I did one of these sessions and I said, look, this is a bottom pattern, but I don't expect it's just going to go up from here. Even though it's bottoming, I felt like it needed to take time because 
you know, the markets have a certain aesthetic and when they go down, you know, in a very parabolic way, the way this did, it doesn't just go down and then do that. You know, it's kind of like a um, super tanker in the ocean. You know, if you call the super tanker and said, hey, listen, you need to turn around and, and go home, it would take literally 18 miles of ocean to do a U-turn for that super tanker. And that's what markets need. They need time to build space away from, you know, the primary downtrend to reverse it so that they can now build, you know, build another way to go up. So I always kind of refer to this concept as spacing where you know the market needs to build some space away from the downtrend so that it can now you know turn in the other direction but you know so however long this takes and you know look I was just sitting through this grind it's just been going up and down between 188 and 192 for the last 3 weeks and I've been just holding my positions because this to me you know is the pattern so even though it was very choppy in here and it looked like every time, you know, it was going to come off, you know, look scary, uh, you know, I was pretty confident that this pattern was going to govern and that eventually prices would find their way higher. Now we have, you know, another one of what I call my insurance day bars today, where you have what I call a key reversal. In fact, this is an outside key reversal where you can see it just snuck a little bit under the low of the last session. So it made a, you know, a new low, and then it also snuck above the high. So I call this a key reversal because you can see it went much lower in the day, but by the end of the day, it closed on the high of the day. Now, this is why I wait till about this time to send my signals out because I want to see how the market closes relative to the high and low. And you can see now that I have my pattern And now I'm looking for a way to get in this thing where I'm looking to, you know, hop on the momentum. So now I think this is going to go higher. Uh, but, you know, every day, you know, it's kind of in a random thing. So what I try and do is find a day like this where you have a key reversal. And then I would simply just sneak, sneak a buy stop above the high of today's session. So whatever today's session was, you know, it was a little bit above 193. Um, I would sneak a buy stop above that. In fact, I would do that today. So while you guys are on this session, let me just go and quickly check um, what the high was. The high was 193, about 15, 193.16. So I put a buy stop, you know, allow for a few pips, you know, 193.19 or something like that. And I would do that right now. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm locked and loaded on this pair but I'm actually going to add to my position personally. Um, so if you're not long, this is something that I feel, you know, you can, you know, get long. Now, you know, I call this an insurance day bar because it might, and it's just a, a jargon that I use, because to me, it tells me where to get in, in the direction of the trend and where and how to understand my risk. So that low was about 191.65. So this is my risk. And I believe this is my, you know, I believe it's it's probably going to go make new highs. So, you know, I would look for at least up here, 198, 600 pips away. So, you know, this is my reward and this is my risk. And, you know, if you can set up trades where you have a three to one risk reward ratio, you know, you will be a big winner. But, you know, instead what most people are doing is, you know, they're trading in and out for 15 pips here and there or 10 pips or whatever. But if you've got a 15 pip stock, you know, objective, you know, you're also got a risk about 15 pips. Then the broker is also going to ask you for at least three pips on your trade. And so you've got a one to one, which means that you've got to win like 90% of your trades to, to overcome all of your losses and the spread. And that's just not sustainable. Whereas if you have a three to one, so let's say you know I have my risk 150 pips and I'm looking to make 750 pips or or, or you know whatever uh, 450 pips, I have a three to one risk reward. So if I'm going to risk 150 pips and you know I have a 450 pip objective, you know it's that's roughly a three to one 
you know, I'm actually, you know, looking to make perhaps more on that. And if you've got a three to one risk reward ratio, you could actually lose 72% of your trades. So, you know, very often people ask me, well, how many trade, you know, what's your winning percentage? Meaning, you know, how many trades do you win, uh, you know, versus how many you lose? And it's, that is, that is an irrelevant thing because I've showed you that my wins are far bigger than my losses. Typically like three trades in a year, like make my whole year. Well, I'll just sit in a trade and make, you know, last year I made almost seven figures on a trade in silver. So this is what I look for. I look for these little gems where the market turns from one direction to another. And, it, you know, sometimes it does that quickly and without any kind of warning. But to my mind, there is a warning. People always say, well, you can't pick tops or bottoms. And by and large, you, 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 you can't, but you don't need to. The market does it for you in the form of a discernible pattern where you have, you know, what I call a double bottom. Make a new low bounce, come off there. Now, this is about your neckline and you're just breaking above this neckline now. And this is how I get into, you know, high probability trades. So Neil says, well, what would you put as the uh, stop loss? So I would put, uh, you know, today's low, which is 191.65. And then I always put my stop loss arbitrarily. I mean, my take profit. So I might just put my take profit right here, 197.87. But if the market starts like confirming that, you know, it's going in the direction I anticipate, then I keep moving the target. Why am I going to prevent myself from making more money? So, you know, unlike most, you know, um, expert advisors or whatever that have a set or defined, you know, stop loss and take profit, you know, I, I will move my parameters as, you know, the market, if the market starts confirming, you know, what I'm looking at. So, um, you know, I just, I put it arbitrarily. In fact, I put a take profit, you know, kind of a sufficient place away where I'm actually hoping that it doesn't trigger because I think this market has a lot of potential. And if I'm right, uh, you know, I'm just going to, you know, see, you know, how this acts. And if we get one of these, then I'm very going to quickly start moving my take profit away from there. Uh, but, you know, if on the other hand, you know, the market goes up 600 pips, to, you know, tomorrow and takes me out, I'll say, well, okay, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll look at getting back in the trade. So I'm actually not looking for the take profit to get triggered, you know, right away. I want to see what this trade does. And I'm actually excited about it. And, you know, my thoughts are is that this thing's going to go much higher. And so um, I'll, I'll put an initial take profit, see what the market does. But my intention is that I'll, I'll keep moving it if I'm correct about this trade. So um, let me just show, show you a couple of stocks I was trading and, uh, you know, what I was recommending recently and why I was recommending them. And um, so initially this was Lyft. I've been looking at Lyft for a long time. I've been telling, you know, my wife, you know, I've been looking at it for a long time and just saying, it just looks like one of the best risk reward trades to me, you know, and it always got kind of short shrifted, you know, because Uber was, you know, uh, you know, talked about much more, but I always thought that I really understood this pattern. So, you know, sometimes, you know, Uber was trading well ahead of Lyft and sometimes I thought I made the wrong decision, uh, but now Lyft is starting to move, you know, much higher relative to Uber. But again, I just look for a pattern that I can understand. And if I can understand the pattern, then, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, the market will eventually, you know, come to me if I'm looking at it correctly. So I know this is kind of light. I don't know how well you can see it on your screen. But to me, the, the whole chart history of this stock, this thing has been just tracing out, you know, a giant double bottom. This is just a classic, perfect bottom. And, you know, right here, it effectively crossed the neckline around $40 or so. And then you had, you know, another consolidation right here. And then, you know, close on a new high. But I was, I was buying it right there. And, uh, you know, I was buying it right there because it looked a lot like the pound versus New Zealand dollar weekly. And I'll flip to the daily in a minute and show you what it looked like when I was buying it. But again, once this thing was coming off, 
you know, I looked at this as an opportunity. So when this thing starts, you know, there was a, um, you know, a big kind of key reversal here and there was, you know, some implied resistance right in the zone. So, you know, I wasn't surprised that, you know, it was, you know, hanging out there and, and resisting a little bit. But to me, I was just hoping that it was going to come off. I was waiting for it. And so when it came down here, I looked at that as the opportunity to buy it. You know, the markets are like an elastic band. You know, they need to pull back, you know, before they explode in the next direction. And to me, this was my elastic band. So I wasn't really, I wasn't focusing on this. I was focusing on this. This to me is my, you know, guiding pattern. So this is a governing double bottom. And with the word bottom in it, this stock is going to find its way higher one way or another. So, you know, if it goes up and sells off, I'm not going to be scared about that. I'm going to be looking to buy that. So, you know, I kind of always try and find things where I can understand why I'm in something. Sometimes it's it's pretty random if you're in a large trend that's been extended for a long time. You know, it's kind of hard to see when, when the trend's going to end, where to hop in. You know, so I just look for these things where I can catch something right as it's about to come out of a major area, like the pound versus New Zealand dollar. You can see all of these have certain similarities where I'm catching a market right as it's about to turn from one direction to another. Um, let me go to daily. So uh, I, I recent, recently had surgery like three weeks ago. And uh, literally the day after I'm telling myself, look, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't need stress. I, you know, I shouldn't be looking at the markets and whatever, but I was bored. And so I started looking at the markets and I've been so honing in on this stock. I've been telling my wife for months that I just love this setup. You just see this clear double bottom, this whole history of this stock is really a bottoming price pattern. And so when it came off, you can see it did, it did uh, the same thing as it did in the pound New Zealand weekly, where you had two bars that both close on the low. So sometimes it, you know, the market fools you, but really it was that it stopped right here. And so I kind of thought, I kind of felt that's exactly what it was gonna do, that it was gonna form this double bottom. I start, you know, I started aggressively buying the stock right here at around 44 and a half. And at the same time, I was buying the um, 46 calls and the 47 calls, right around the time the stock was around 44 and a half. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. They were like giving it to me for free. It was like a dollar for the 46 calls, which is about a buck and a half out of the money. But, uh, you know, I, so I call, you know, when you buy options, you have to be not only correct, but you have to be correct about the time because those call options were expiring exactly the week after I bought them. Um, and so you have to be very precise about your timing. So I don't wanna you know, have you guys start you know, gambling and playing these things because you will lose all your money very quickly. But I just thought we were gonna have an explosive move and I, I loaded up on the stock and the options. And then here you had another one of what I call my insurance day bars. So to me, an insurance day bar is either a you know, key reversal like we have in Pound New Zealand, where you make a new low and close on the high, and you know, this points in the direction it wants to go. But I don't just trade this reversal in a vacuum, I have to have the underlying pattern to tell me that which way I'm facing. And then the other thing I look for is what I call a narrow range or an inside bar. And to me, it doesn't really matter where that closes. You can see that you know, literally the range of this bar sits within the range of that bar. And so I call that an inside day bar or a narrow range bar. And the same thing would apply on a weekly chart. And so I look at these inside bars as, you know, a coiling of energy. So this is just like a, a building of energy. And then, you know, we can divine where the energy is going to release by virtue of the, you know, the either the key reversal or the pattern or something that precedes it. And so uh, to my mind, this was just a layup and I'm actually pissed I didn't invest even more money. I put quite a bit in there, but uh, this to me was, I've been looking for this for you know six months. I've been waiting for this pattern to start you know, getting fertile. You know, Through all of this, I've been waiting for an opportunity. 
uh, in the stock. And now I'm just loaded up on the stock and I actually loaded up on this week's options that expire at the end of the week and it's a short week. So, you know, you have to be very correct, but you can see this thing sitting right at the new highs. And uh, this is another example of why the market is the news, why, um, you know, all I watch is price action. Now, I, I fully knew that um, there was going to be a news event right here where the company was going to uh, announce its earnings. And so I started buying the stock right there and the options. Um, and I stayed in both, knowing full well that, you know, there was going to be an earnings and these earnings announcements, they can do anything they, you can, they're, you know, this in, open $6 higher, you know, on the announcement. Uh, but, you know, I use these events, you know, uh, to me, these events are just an expression of the underlying pattern. So there's no way to tell how the earnings were going to come out, but the pattern was telling me that the, the news was only going to be a catalyst for where this thing was going to go in the first place. And that's exactly um, what uh, it happened. So Tim says, in your view, is there still room to go long on lift? Absolutely. Um, basically, you know, I would just measure this move. Um, from uh, where is it? From fifteen dollars to forty dollars. So that's about twenty-five dollars, and then put twenty-five dollars on here. And you're looking at least 65 on this, but I, I think this is going to go a lot higher. I think this is going to go a lot higher. I mean, the size of this base is going to be a moonshot. So I just think this is going to, you know, uh, go higher over time. And you can see you have kind of what I call a coil right here, where you have three inside days. So the market has been building energy over the last, so that the news came out and initially sold off. And then the last three trading sessions have been uh, what I call inside bars because all three trading sessions are sitting, let me just change this a little bit, within the range four days ago. So you have this huge building of energy and typically when you keep building energy and building energy, you know, you uncork in the direction of the, the pattern and the trend. So I, I can well imagine that, you know, we're just going to, you know, uncork perhaps even tomorrow. And so I'm long these call options and so and they expire Friday. So, uh, you know, I'm looking to get, you know, uh, more benefit for that. Now, the other stock that I was looking at, uh, this KTOS, um, It didn't close very well today, so let's see what happens here. Kind of gapped up today, and, and I've got a huge position in this. And you know, again, uh, so this is KTOS. But it, whether I win or lose, what I'm trying to do is just show you the rationale. And um, So to me, there's always some kind of, you know, underlying gestalt of why I'm looking at a trade. And so this has got a kind of a, a funky looking uh, double bottom in here where it doesn't have to be symmetrical. But when you look back, you see the W. And so with a double bottom, you know, it now implies that this, you know, the, the instrument, whatever you're looking at, whatever this, you know, instrument is that, that shapes this pattern is going to go higher. So I always look for a pattern and not only does this have a double bottom, but it has kind of a, an inverted head and shoulders, which is just an upside down uh, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So it looks like an upside down version of a head and shoulders, like a man or woman's head and shoulders. So this is just an upside down version. So you have the double bottom and the inverted head and shoulders and basically it broke out of the neckline, which confirms the pattern around 20 bucks or so. And you can see we've just been going higher. And here last week was another key reversal, made a new low or the week prior, closed on the higher, pointing in the direction that this wanted to go. So, you know, let's just see if this has got, you know, more gas in it. But 
again, <clears throat> one of the greatest um, sayings or whatever that, uh, you know, I heard that I think is very applicable to what we do, you know, recently, not recently, um, back when Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player that ever lived, was playing for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they were playing in the stadium and uh, the lights went out and they had to kind of delay the game for, you know, an hour while they figured out the uh, electricity and whatever. And so the broadcaster in the booth, you know, used that as an opportunity to go down and speak to uh, Wayne Gretzky. So he puts a mic in, you know, Wayne's face and he says, you know, Wayne, look, you're not the fastest guy out there. You're not the strongest guy out there. You know, how are you, you know, able to do what you're going to do? And Wayne said, like, the most profound thing. I mean, it sends chills when I, because it's, it's so applicable. He says, I don't skate to where the puck is. I skate to where it's going to be. And so to me, you know, I, you know, try and have a vision for where, you know, these markets are going to go by virtue of first having a reference, having an underlying, you know, gestalt for it. And then once you have a reference, you know, this actually had a bear price pattern. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just explain, the, you know, the subtle nuances. You see these patterns all the time, and now you've got to decide, you know, is this the governing pattern or, you know, do you, this the, 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 the governing pattern? And I'll show you this on the daily, and it looks much more profound. In fact, why don't I just flip to that? No, I'll go back. So when I was looking at that giant long-term pattern and thinking, okay, this thing's going higher, when it sold off, to my mind, that was an opportunity. So right here, so the market always throws you patterns. And so, you know, you could very well have said, hey, you have a double bottom, double top here, and you know, looks like a double top, and you can see the market did careen out of here. But right here, this key reversal pointed in the direction that this thing was, you know, coming from. And once I saw that, you know, key reversal and the ensuing market action, right about here, around the, when the stock was around 27, 28, I started buying the 32 and a half dollar calls. Um, 32.5. So that means, I mean, the stock was four and a half dollars out of the money. And I don't know how much you guys know about, uh, you know, options or whatever, but, you know, I paid around a dollar 10 for this thing. So added to the 32 and a half strike price, my break even is around 33.60, which when the stock's around 28 bucks, you know, seems like, um, you know, this, the, 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 the stock has to make a big move in order for you to make money. And, you know, that's the thing with, but the thing about this is that these options expire 319. So I had almost two months from the time I bought these options to, to have this thing play out. And so, you know, I just thought by virtue of the giant, you know, price pattern, you know, in this, and maybe I can put it up on a, a different chart because it definitely puts it in a, um, a different perspective. Sorry, I have to, there's another broker, so I have to just log back into my account. So this is a much longer term uh, chart of uh, KTOS. No, that's too big, sorry.
And this is remarkably similar to the uh, chart of silver. We have the double top, you have this huge descending triangle that broke out, and then the stock went into a long-term funk, uh, you know, long-term 10, 12-year bear market where it dropped from 50 to five bucks. And then, you know, at the height of the pandemic, started bottoming and put on this bull pattern that we looked at, this inverted head and shoulders. And you can see that last week, or a few weeks ago, cracked above the neckline, effectively uh, confirming, and you know broke out above you know multi-year highs. So to my mind, it just seemed like there was so much air above this stock, and I know nothing about it. I took a shot based on this price pattern, and you know we'll see what happens. You know right now I'm making about three to one on my call options, but you know that can disappear very quickly. The stock goes down a dollar and you know my options get cut 50 percent so you know options is a, a very dangerous game um if you you know don't have a handle on what you're doing so i just wanted to show you a couple things of you know what i've done lately you know over the week we'll you know pick out you know trades in the real market uh what we actually did today in the pound new zealand and now maybe i'll just hand it over to you and you know we'll get a couple of questions answered so first off um, do you think this kind of trading makes sense? Do you think, uh, do you see that, you know, this could uh, make a difference uh, in the way you, um, you know, look at the markets or perhaps would make you more consistent? And again, what I'm looking to do is seize on the big winners in the market. I'm not looking for, you know, uh, in and out. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, fodder for the brokers. So Chris says yes. Uh, Ranford says yes, indeed. Byrne says yes. Uh, she says, uh, Pound New Zealand, how long would you hold it up for? As long as the market will have me, she says. I've been in a you know, Pound New Zealand trade for 13 months. Um, Colin says, absolutely. Goran says, yes. Uh, let's see, Neil says, interesting perspective. God, you guys are coming in so fast. Cello says, makes total sense. Uh, Heidi says, love it. Uh, great info. God, you, it's coming in so fast that I can't read it. Um, Adal says, what do you say to people who say that technical analysis is a waste of time? Well, I know what's in my bank account and it's all based on technical analysis. So look, you know, there's there's no one way to make you know money. Warren Buffett's got a lot more money than me and he uses fundamental analysis and his horizon is forever. So, you know, it's to each his own. Um, I'm just showing you how I make a ton of dough and it's not for everybody. And, uh, you know, I always say just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you can because I was willing to sit in this pound New Zealand. So this is what I wanted to, to, to say, because I was watching this thing yesterday. It was kind of a holiday. and um, This is what was occurring yesterday in the market. Where was it? I mean, it, yeah, it got. So this is a 15 minute chart of the pound New Zealand. And if you saw any of these patterns on a 15 minute chart, you say, wow, this kind of looks bearish. You know, you've kind of got, uh, you know, this double bottom, double top here, then you got these tops here, and, you know, now it looks like you've got another top here, and, you know, so, but I was, I was watching it yesterday, and I was, you know, I've been long this market, and then all of it, you know, went up, you know, to here, and then just shot down, and then it shot down here, I mean, in these huge, gigantic gyrations you know, like in three seconds, just all over the place. And so if you're trading a 15 minute chart, you know, it looks very random. And in fact, you know, there were several times here where I would have said, you know, this is really kind of a bear market. You know, this looks very kind of bearish. And that's why, you know, I look at as long a time frame as I can so that I can understand what I'm looking at. And to me, you know, all that noise that's been going on, and I, I said it on the last four-day session, I said, this is not going to turn around quickly. This is not going to be easy. And you can see it's been ugly in here. It's just been daily chop. And I've been holding my positions through all of that because this is what I see. And, you know, you know, I, like Wayne Gretzky, I want to skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. And so to me, you know, if you understand the cards you're holding, people say, well, I don't understand how you can sit in a trade for, you know, two months. It's because this tells me to. 
And, you know, this is just noise. If it drops, I just use this as an opportunity to get more. And then it does that again, I, you know, I get more. So it's just kind of having a vision, but it's a vision based on an understanding of what that, uh, you know, particular. And so I, I just seek out where I can find things uh, that I understand. Adolphus says, must the inside bar be the same, uh, both long? So an inside bar uh, can be anything. It, you know, to me, it doesn't matter where it, it closes. Uh, you know, so you could have an inside bar, you know, and it can close on the low of the day. And, you know, what I would do is I just put a buy stop, you know, above that day. So the, the great thing about, you know, this execution is that it requires the market to confirm what you're looking at. So this is after all, just, you know, visions in my head, I could be partly delusional by now, and I probably am. You know, it means nothing. So I require the market to confirm. So instead of getting in here, I put my buy stop above there. And if the market goes down, guess what? No harm, no foul. But if the market, you know, takes me out, and this is the beauty. I don't have to watch the markets. I'm not sitting in the markets four hours a day watching. So I just put my buy stop there, let the market put me in, and let the market do all the work for me. So I'm not trying to find some magic moving average crossover on a 15 minute chart in the middle of the night. You know, I'll basically put my buy stop here at 5 p.m. Eastern time and not look at it till the next day. And if it triggers it, fine, I got a stop loss behind it. If it goes down, I'm not triggered, you know, no harm, no foul, I'll go look for another trade. So the inside bar can be, you know, um, in fact, you had an inside bar right here right there. And all you had to do was put your buy stop above that high and, you know, the momentum's in you. You know, and you probably want to put your stop loss under here somewhere. So as Graham, Graham, Graham always said to me, the market puts you in and the market takes you out. So people said, well, how long do you stay in the market? Well, as long as it will have me. If it'll keep going, then, you know, it. Uh, why get out? But, you know, on the other hand, if I see some pattern, I get some, you know, head and shoulders here, then I'll, you know, I'll get out when I see some other pattern that tells me that this ride is over. But, you know, if, you know, if it's still going up and, you know, a month from now, uh, I'm still going to be in it. Somebody, Warren says, do you care about negative swap rates? So. What Warren is talking about are, um, here, and I'll just take a snapshot right now of my account. So on FX trades, you have uh, a commission, and if you stay in the trade, the broker charges you what's called a swap fee which is an additional charge on your position. And the more you know, time you stay, the more these swap fees. So you can see that I've incurred um, a swap fee of, um, now I, I have a special arrangement with this broker where you know, I pay them a part of the spread. Uh, but in addition to that, they, um, they charge me a swap fee. But you can see that my profits in this position are forty-two thousand dollars, including the swap fee. Now it's you know it's a it's a you know decent sized position. Um, but I'll just sit in this trade, and yes, this swap fee will keep building, and maybe at some point it'll be you know ten thousand dollars. But I expect at this point this would, might be a hundred thousand dollars. And so this is in contrast to the the charge that you guys are getting. Uh, you know, incurred. So let's let's say the average trade. Well, certainly on the pound New Zealand, it's you know the spread's a little bit higher. So let's say it's three pips. It's probably five pips or more. And most people are trading you know five times a day in and out. So if you're if you're trading five times a day, you know let's just on a on a normal lot. This would be you know thirty. This would be you know 150 bucks a day. And then if you trade 25, you know trades a month. You know, times 150. You know, I don't know what that is. 37.50. I, yeah, I don't know if that's right. 
and let's say I'm in this thing for a couple of months, uh, and then you multiply this by 25 lots, you know, that's that's $75,000 in and out. So you don't realize by trading in and out, you know, how much you're incurring, uh, you know, in, in fees. You don't, you don't take it into consideration because you don't see it that as a charge, but it's a silent charge between, you know, the bid and the offer. So every time you get in a position, you're automatically in a loss because you've got to make up the spread. And the more you're trading in and out, uh, the more uh, your chances of accumulating a loss, you know, go higher. So instead, I just like to, you know, sit in a trade and let it work for me. Um, Colin says, from your previous videos, you often advise us to make our position size smaller and stop loss wider. Would you consider your stop loss advice at 9165? Uh, yeah, I would, you know, I would put it under this key reversal. It should work from here. So yeah, I think that that should be, that should be good. Uh, if you want, you know, if you want to stay in this position, you know, you could put it under 91. I mean, this thing is volatile in this in this neighborhood. You can see it's going back and forth. Um, but yeah, I would put it under you know under this key reversal low. So that, that to me is my anchor. Um, let's see. Um, a lot of questions are coming in. Uh, C says, "How long before the swap fees are charged?" The swap fees are incurred every two days. And then on Wednesdays, it's actually more because you're charged till the following Monday. But again, um, if you compare it to, uh, you know, you trade once and hold it for a month versus you trade in and out five times a day, um, believe me, uh, you're incurring a cost. Let's see. Um, Sorry, your questions are coming in so fast. Um, how do you decide which in stocks and futures charts are looking for? Yeah, well, with future, you know, stocks, there's just uh, an endless universe. There's 10,000 stocks out there, and uh, you can see I've got a few on my list here, and I, I just kind of go through, you know, various things. Sometimes I look at, you know, uh, uh, certain pattern recognition things, and you know, high and low for the day, and you know, stocks that are moving, and then I just kind of flip to the chart. You know, one chart that I've been talking about for a while is BYND. You can see I bought the puts today. So I bought the puts right into this high, you know, because to me, this is, you know, I just feel like this thing's going to go a lot lower. You can see the massive key reversal here. And I think this company's got earnings coming out, I think, at this week or next week. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to go lower. You know, you can see this key reversal. So... You know, what I do is I look at, I look at you know, these kind of key reversals and then I sell into it the next day. So once I, you know, these things are like anchors. So once I feel like I understand a pattern that's emerging, perhaps a double top, and then I see what I call this key reversal, made a new high, close on the low of the day. Then I use that kind of elastic band approach where I'm already long the put, so I'm effectively short and I'm also short the stock. But, you know, if I was going to add to my position, I would look for, you know, some kind of, you know, a uh, move higher, a couple bucks higher, and then, you know, look to catch it. Um, so I always look at these key reversals as opportunities. I, you know, look for any movement higher, I short into that, and then look for that kind of action. I think you're going to, you know, one of the stocks that I'm looking at for tomorrow is um, Lemonade, L-M-N-D. It also finished badly today. This is kind of funky. This is actually, you know, I don't know about this one. So you can see we've got, you know, a uh, double bot, a double top here, and then today you had a key reversal. So what I would do actually, instead of selling, you know, selling it, because I don't know that this thing's not going to continue higher. I would put a sell stop underneath the, today's low and see if you can get some traction. This may not be the best one. You've got a lot of like, 
uh, that may not be, but like beyond BYND, if I get a, you know, a hook down uh, or a key reversal, I just sell into strength in the following day. Uh, same thing with the uh, snow. I've been having a field day shorting the stock. So this to me looks like it's tracing out a double top. So this is my reference. And now you have these key reversals here. This has got a funky thing. And so now when I see a pattern, so the question is, is that double top the governing thing or is this double bottom you know, going to do that? And it kind of, it's an open question in my mind. And the way I resolve the question is basically the market tells me what it's going to do. So if I see fall, further follow through tomorrow, then I know that this double top is guiding. And so I would be inclined to sell, you know, this thing opens up a dollar or two higher, I would just sell into that, uh, you know, put a stop loss a little bit higher. So, you know, you have this key reversal here, you know, close somewhat on the low. This is a funky pattern. This is, um, uh, so you can see this reverse triangle. And the only reason I reference this, this is that, um, Sometimes you get these fake breakouts below these triangles and then it goes to a new high. In fact, I'll, I'll show you uh, exactly a couple of things where I made. So here was an example like five years ago in the NASDAQ where I saw this reverse triangle. It popped out of the reverse triangle, made a double bottom and went on to make new highs. Now, for some reason, this is one of the first trades I, you know, I did when uh, you know, I started the pattern trader where I estimated exactly from the top to the bottom how far this was going to fall. And then when it did, I said, it's going to go and make a new high. And that's exactly what happened. And it just froze in my mind. So when I saw the same chart in Facebook a couple of years ago, uh, I just thought this is just an amazing opportunity where you had the reverse triangle fell, made a double bottom, went to make a new high. And you know, right at the beginning, when I saw that double bottom, I bought the stock, made some money, blew the stock out, waited for it to retrace. And then I started very actively buying the uh, call options. Uh, in fact, these 185 uh, call options, I was buying for 30 cents, but at that time the stock was $25 out of the money. But based on you know, how this you know, acted, how it went quickly made a new high, I surmised that you know, this stock was gonna do the same and that's exactly what it did. So I bought the out of the money calls here. And this is how dangerous options are because I bought these 185 call options for 30 cents when the stock was at 160, when it was all the way up here. And eight days before those things expired, they were trading for $4.50. And that one series, I was making $350,000 in it. I'm going, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm making 350 grand. And then I go to myself, no, I'm not. Because this thing just had to down tick under 185, which you can see it did. And those things would have been worthless. So on that Thursday, I sold those calls for $358,000. And one week later, they were worthless because they were under 185. So that's, you know, uh, the danger of options. So there was, uh, you know, the, uh, the record for my broker account. So you kind of have to have a vision, but options are, so this is what I'm saying is that I'm kind of looking at this reverse triangle and remembering that that was kind of a trap and it went on to make a new high. So uh, I'm kind of going to be very interested to see how this, this stock plays out. And this is where it gets a little bit difficult, where you kind of have to choose between which is the guiding pattern. And frankly, these kind of guys stand out to me, where it made a new high, close on the low, made a new high, close on the low. And those kind of point in the direction. So you have the governing pattern and then the reversal. And my inclination is that this stock, um, you know, is going to go lower, but it could be a trap. And if, you know, we go like that, I'm going to load up, you know, so like I said, if, it's, if, if something doesn't go one way, it's going to go the other. And so I'm kind of open as to what this is going to do. And I'm, I'm, you know, this is definitely on my radar. Um, and, uh, you know, but to me, you know, I would kind of sell into any strength to, into BYND tomorrow. So I kind of use these reversals. Um, you know, let me just show you a, a longer. Uh, so this was kind of it got uh, you know caught up in uh, you know this Reddit 
you know, short covering thing where game stopped and all these stocks ran and um, this was caught up in that whole short covering, short squeeze kind of uh, atmosphere. And this was, uh, sorry. I put the wrong number. Um, sorry, this just has to recalibrate because I put the wrong. So you can see this was, you know, where the stock ran to 218. Now I was shorting it, full disclosure, at 140, um, right around here. And uh, the day I went in for surgery, this thing went to 218. And I'm glad I wasn't looking at the market at the time, because uh, I would have freaked out. But uh, so this did get, you know, caught up in the whole thing. Um, but to my mind, you know, the preceding chart patterns where I saw the head and shoulders here. And then I thought I saw a head and shoulders here. And this is where, you know, the market can trap you, where it didn't quite confirm. It got right down to the neckline, didn't get through it. And then, you know, uh, set a trap and went the other way. But I do believe that this thing's going to come back down to earth. And I think they've got an earnings in a week or so. And, you know, I got to believe that this thing's going to come lower. So you can see we've got the beginning of a key reversal. This is the beginning of the week. And so, um, I just look for charts like this and, you know, look for opportunities where, you know, I can understand my risk reward. So uh, what was the high and low today? Um, EYND was 172.88 to 180. So the, the high was 183.75. So that's basically going to be my reference. So, you know, if this thing can move a little bit higher, you know, move to 176, 175, 176, I would sell into that and use that as my stop loss. And that's, you know, why these, sometimes these reversals, they're anchors, you know, you understand your risk that day where, you know, I, I don't feel that I'm going to, you know, be at a huge risk, even if I go short this thing and it goes up, I don't think it's going to take out that high. So, you know, the, the, the traders today told me, you know, where the risk is because they try to push it higher and it failed. So that tells me, you know, they they paid to 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 set my risk, so that you know any bounce higher, you know, I would uh, you know tend to uh, think that you can short into here, and I, I do think you're coming back at least down to here and and then down, and perhaps a lot lower. I just think that this thing got caught up in that short covering rally, and uh, thankfully I had enough in my account where uh, I just. You know, I, I didn't even see this. This is exactly the day I went in for surgery. So I didn't even see that. And my friend told me I almost had a heart attack, but uh, I just decided to stay the course. Um, Julie says, um, tell us about gold. Uh, I've been a bear on gold for, you know, several months. Uh, as my members uh, will tell you that, you know, since it topped out, um, I've been pretty bearish on uh, gold. Let me go to the weekly. So this is uh, spot gold, XAU USD. And uh, you can see right here where this was a very controlled rally where you can see the bars were you know very small but then you can see in this three week time increment the volatility increased incredibly each one of those bars average about a hundred dollars and so to my mind when something goes parabolic or it starts getting you know um, the uh, volatility starts expanding you know, that's where I, when I see three bars like this, that's when I say, okay, I'm out. I don't care if it goes higher. I'll, I'm just going to hand it over to the other guy and I'll see what happens. And you can see we went into a cons sideways consolidation. Uh, but to my mind, this thing looks like it's going to go lower. And to me, 
this has been tracing out a long-term ascending, broadening price pattern. It's called uh, an ascending broadening price pattern because it starts out narrow and it widens at the top. So uh, I feel that this is on a trajectory uh, to 1650 or 1700. And that could be a place where it goes that or that. So, uh, you know, I had two different charts, you know, of the ascending broadening this year of the pound versus Australian dollar. And when it did this, I speculated that it was going to go to the beginning of the pattern. And that's exactly what it did. But when you look at the NASDAQ, it did this and bounced and went and made a new high. So, but I feel like we're in the middle right now with gold and that this feels like we're going to turn lower and go. And you can see this guy right here, this big, huge key reversal. Sometimes these reversals, they point in the direction they want to go. Sometimes it just takes weeks and weeks to resolve that before it goes. And you can see last week you had an inside weak bar. So you can use the same analysis where the range of this bar was inside the range of the other. So it was called an inside bar. And so all you had to do was put a sell stop under the low of last week and you're automatically put into this trade. And I would look for, you know, this amount of money. So, um, I put out a sell in recommendation on gold a while ago at 8.42. And uh, thus far, that's, you know, where it's at. And I'm looking for it to go, you know, much lower. I put my, you know, take profit at 17.17. 17. Um, but I'll take a look, you know, once it's there, I think it's going to go below 1,700. Um, now Rush says, good knowledge. I'm live today for a long time in the hospital. Okay. Uh, I hope you're doing well now, Rush. Um, so junkie trader says, why do you choose not to use moving averages for equities, at least the institutional ones, so that you know what side of the trade you're on and able to see what lines and certain tickers respect. So, you know, if you're looking for certain tickers and whatnot, you know, I'm not trading for a dollar in and a dollar out. You know, I don't need to see tickers. You know, when I look at the pattern of lift, I don't need any lines to tell me what I'm looking at. Um, I've been looking at this for a long time. And uh, and this is all I've been looking at. Yeah, there's some volume underneath here that comes along with the thing, but I don't look at that one way or another. I just look at a picture. And then, you know, to me, the picture gives me an idea of the direction. And then once I understand the direction, then I just try and, you know, hop on board at the right place. But this is all I needed to see in this stock. This whole, all this whole life of this stock tells me that it's just been one big, you know, turnaround. This thing's just going like that. So I don't need to see tickers. I don't need to see moving averages. I'm not playing the short game. You know, I got in here and, you know, my, you know, whole time is, you know, uh, there. So, uh, yes, with, with options and whatnot, I need to be correct about my timing, but the market tells me everything that I needed to, you know, when it broke out and closed on an all time multi-year high right there, that told me the momentum was in my favor. I don't need to see a Bollinger band or something to tell me what I'm looking at. Tim says, do you use trend lines? I do. Trend lines are, you know, fairly arbitrary. I mean, you could say, look, uh, this thing broke out right there. Uh, fair enough. Uh, you know, it was coincided right with the neckline, actually. So both the trend line and the breakout of the neckline were right around the same place. So, yeah. In that, so I do use, you know, certain trend lines. Uh, but really what it does for me is I, I start off with a vision, a picture. You know, and I've been so excited about this picture. Even when the market was languishing here, I was just looking and waiting and biding my time uh, because I, you know, it's like Wayne Gretzky. I see the thing, the puck up here based on what this tells me.
Kenny says, which patterns do you see in the Na in the NASDAQ? Uh, so I assume you're, well, the proxy for the NASDAQ is the QQQ. And uh, so this has been in an ascending, uh, broadening price pattern, and it broke out many moons ago. But this is an example of how uh, So this is the same thing that we looked at in gold, this ascending broadening price pattern. And you can see when it got to this inflection point, right along, you can see all of these key reversals along here. That So once it got to this thing, you know, it obviously went much higher. And now it's just, you know, in this kind of controlled channel. And, you know, we might just have a poke down here, but I don't really see you know, look, you never know. This thing's gone parabolic, you know, somewhat parabolic, and at some point it's got to stop. Um, so, you know, if we start taking out last week's low, which is this mini, and I started thinking about it, this is kind of, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't see this thing like gold where, you know, you have these expansions where you have one bar and then another. If I saw this, you know, then, you know, that would indicate, but this still looks somewhat controlled, but you never know, you know, anytime arbitrarily, you could just have a, you know, quick reaction and go back in the trend. Um, so right now you're just in a very controlled trading channel. And so, yeah, you could duke it out here. And what I try and do is, uh, you know, I look at uh, certain volatility indicators. So this is UVXY. It's a kind of a measure of volatility and it's just a fancy way. If this thing goes down, the market's going up. If the market goes down, this thing goes up. So I kind of keep an eye on this just to see if, uh, you know, this is a turn, there's a turn here. And um, you can see we made a new low, but you know, we've got this itty bitty little bar. And sometimes those little narrow bars at the bottom, you know, precede, you know, a, a move higher. So I'm gonna look, and see what this does uh, tomorrow. I think the high today was 971. So, you know, any turn in this volatility, but you can see this has been a terrible investment, but at some point, you know, when the market turns, you know, you're gonna get a big move. And so if you're looking at trend lines, um, again, they're pretty arbitrary. I mean, this trend line kind of crept out here. Maybe connect, I don't know. So anything above here could really start signaling, you know, some kind of move higher. But you can see even the bounces, they don't last very long. I mean, you can get these huge, you know, 30, 50% bounces. You know, right around here, I bought this thing and got a nice move here because I sensed that, you know, we had a, you know, a, a little bit of a support area, a little bit of a bottom here. But because we made so many lows, I surmised we were going to come back and make a new high. So I just bought this for you know, a bit of a move and, you know, maybe it'll do one of these things here too. But, uh, you know, trying to short this market has just been a fool's game. So, but, you know, look, I, I you know, I'm long, uh, you know, lift and I'm short beyond and, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I'm going to take a look at Lemonade into, into tomorrow's opening. Um, you know, been some, you know, IPOs that have just gone hyperbolic and kind of looking at, this is Dash, kind of tough to tell what it's doing. Um, so I just look at a bunch of stuff all the time. So Carrie says, will this be recorded? Uh, I think it will. If it doesn't, you can give our uh, support team uh, buzz, I'll put that email there, support at the pattern trader.com. So I'll put that in the chat box. Uh, Rob says, what about uh, pound versus Australian? And then I'll kind of, uh, I think, uh, leave it there. We've got to leave some on the table for, for the week. So uh, I like pound New Zealand better than pound Australian, but I think the same kind of thing is going on where you know you set a, a bottoming pattern several years ago in the form of this uh, 
triple bottom right here. I, you know, I kind of see the patterns a little bit easier or clearer on Pound New Zealand. And then you've got, you know, kind of another double bottom here. And you can see that we've got this coil occurring where you can see you've got two weekly bars inside the prior week. Now, obviously, we're just at the beginning of the week. We'll see how this thing finishes. Uh, but, you know, uh, last week you had a, a narrow range bar. So this also applies to, you know, weekly charts where you can see that this was kind of an inside bar. And we've just taken that out, that high out. So I do think that this is, you know, going higher. And, you know, you could probably put a risk somewhere here. So, you know, you've got a very small risk and probably a very high reward uh, on these things. So I think they are in the midst of a turn. Uh, it could still take a little while longer, but I think like the like a super tanker, this is turning around. So Ranford says, thanks for the explanation. I'm beginning to see a lot clearer. Um, so with that said, I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to play a, a short, uh, you know, little video for you uh, guys who want to understand, uh, you know, how to get in my program, my daily program, where, you know, I share these trades every day, and they've just been hitting on all cylinders um, in the last couple of, you know, weeks with Lyft, Kados, Pound New Zealand, uh, Pound Yen. So um, check out the video uh, if you, you know, are interested in, uh, you know, my program. Otherwise, I'll see you back tomorrow. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks a ton uh, for showing up, and uh, you know, hopefully, you uh, you know got some value out of this. And also, you know, I really appreciate any comments you have. Um, you know, it kind of gives me a guideline because I know a lot of this stuff just exists in my head. I never know if I explain it well enough. So, you know, just you know, in, in, you know, instead of saying it's great or it stinks, you know, give me a reason why you liked it and if you got any value out of it and if you think it can make a difference in your trading. What I'm about to reveal has to be the quickest and easiest way to execute scientific based trading strategies in the world today. There's no need to scratch your head in frustration, guessing your way to halfway there, because I've already created the ideal solution for you. Now I'm going to introduce you to my daily journal. On a real basic level, it is a daily email that I send to my inner circle of traders. This email contains the exact trades I'm looking at, where to enter, where to exit, and how much to risk on any given trade. This radically simple yet effective system of delivering scientifically tested trading results will work for you even if you are completely new to trading or you have years of experience as a struggling trader or you don't have a computer. A phone is all that is needed these days. Before I show you what these emails look like, I first need to tell you what this service is not. This service is not a get rich quick scheme. Real results take time. You're not going to become a millionaire overnight. To get scientific studies, you need to execute this strategy with scientific consistency. If you're not fully committed, then this won't work for you. If you're going to jump from the next shiny object as soon as a marketing guy sends you an email or post something on Facebook, then this system is also not going to be for you. This is for men and women who are ready to stop looking for miracles, like Mike, who had this to say on Facebook. I don't know if Mark Shazen realizes the huge impact he is having on some of our lives. I've gone from working 12 hour days in oil to sitting in front of my PC at home for a couple of hours a day, placing trades and learning from his journals. I am now planning to go traveling to and can trade from my laptop along the way. This has been a truly life changing experience. Or like Andy who wrote me an email saying, hi Mark, just a quick thank you. Last week, I lost 51% of my trades, but still returned a profit of 1,265 and 26 British pounds. And that was multiplied by two, as I have three accounts, one for myself, one for my son, and another for my wife. So I grossed over 3,800 pounds in one week, over three accounts, using the methods you are teaching. Keep up the good work. Best regards, Andy. Andy actually attached a screenshot of the first account he mentioned in his email. 
I literally have hundreds upon hundreds of emails, comments, and reviews just like this about my daily email service. So let me break down exactly how it works. Every day from Sunday to Thursday, you'll get an email from me with instructions on what to do. The email looks like this. You get an image of the chart with the analysis drawn on it so you know exactly why I'm entering the trade. Each of the patterns I draw on this chart will have been scientifically tested. You get the exact entry and exit points so that you can enter the trade without guesswork and do it quickly. You also get a brief analytical breakdown. These small, digestible chunks of information help you retain the reason why I enter trades and it teaches you why you make money. I call this daily email service the Pattern Trader Elite, and you've no doubt noticed that the Pattern Trader Elite is, without question, the most efficient service there is. And that gives you the freedom to experience a scientifically tested trading strategy without needing to spend months or years learning it for yourself. And as any Pattern Trader Elite member will tell you, the results are off the charts. Pun intended. In fact, a woman called Marta sent me the following email. She said, Dear Mark, I'm doing really well. Yes, the last two weeks I have made $15,000 on your recent trades in gold, Australian dollar versus US dollar, US dollar versus Japanese yen, pound versus Japanese yen, and I do like the Dow Jones industrials. Thank you, you are a gem, Marta. Now, before I reveal exactly how to sign up to become a Pattern Trader Elite member, I'd like to throw in a few bonuses. The first free gift you'll be receiving is the Pattern Trader Advisory. Every single week, I'll send you a 15 to 30 minute video analysis of the markets. This will give you hands-on training so that you can really accelerate your learning even faster. One of my members, Chris, wrote to me recently telling me how much he's enjoyed the education part of this service. Hi Mark, I doubt you will read this, but in case you do, I just wanted to say thank you. I have focused my time on learning the principles of your trading strategy as I feel the education is of most importance to me. I've made three trades this week. One, your recommendation on XAU USD, which is spot gold, and the other two on my own in oil and the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Oil has dropped out of the sky nearly 500 pips in one week, and the dollar yen just started with momentum on the downside. I'm on holiday with the family, which has added to a very enjoyable week. Kind regards, Chris. On our website right now, the Pattern Trader Advisory is $200 per year, and it'll be thrown in with the entire bundle of packages for free. The next bonus I'm going to give you is called the Master Pattern Trader. You'll get a live one to two hour session with me every single Friday. That's over 45 live sessions within the next 12 months in a group environment. Here, you get to watch how I go through the markets, then you can ask questions and discover exactly what I believe is going to happen next. On the website right now, the Master Pattern Trader is $997, which I consider to be underpriced since it comes out to be less than $3 per day. However, here's the bad news. This service is very exclusive. It is not for everyone which is why I don't just have a buy now button below this video. In order to get into this program, you have to do something a little bit unconventional. I'm running a little experiment where I'm offering people a huge discount. If you'd like to be part of the Pattern Trader Elite service, send an email over to markshawsenelite at gmail.com with the subject line, let's do this. I'll send you a detailed summary of exactly what this program is all about, and you just tell me if I should save you a spot or not. I don't want to make this publicly available. First, make sure you copy the address below and email me at markshawsenelite at gmail.com. And then in the subject line, just put, let's do this. When you do that, you've taken the first step to joining hundreds of other highly successful traders. We've had many interviews with people who transformed themselves from ordinary people to elite traders. Here's just a small snippet of what they had to say. Damn it, I'm gonna learn this and I'm gonna figure it out. I, I finally got I finally got angry and said, you know what? I'm gonna figure it out. 
you know, for me, it comes down to trust. I really trust what he does, and I follow him, and what he was, what he's saying is, you know, accurate. And I'm, I'm really big on details, and he has the details in there. And I must say that、uh, with every winning trade, it just confirms my my belief in his method.、Mm. That the way he reasons it, the trade, you know, is actually correct. Mark is a genuine, sincere, caring individual who cares about his members.、Um, he is as smart as any forex trader that I have ever met. And I, it has actually helped me being more secure and be more calm about my about my trading、yeah. and about my. I've heard that before also from others, and and I would just、uh, repeat this. It,、uh, I'll repeat that. It is he makes me calm. You know? When I actually do training, I'm not so、um, I'm not so、um, scared anymore, you know. And I do think that、uh, y'all's program、uh, is definitely the key、uh, to that end result. You follow Mark for a little bit of time, and you listen. You see, he's truly genuine, and he's the real deal. He's not full of it. He's not just oh, I'm boasting. Hey, look what I made this time around. You know, no, it's. A, B, and C is going to get you to D, E, and F. So let's talk results then. So where are you at right now? So where's where's your account? You're in you're in the black. How much has your account grown over the last let's say year? So、um, I think、uh, based on the screenshot I gave you, it was like about seventy grand CHF. It's still hovering around that level.、Uh, essentially, what I've done is I withdrew the principal investment that I put in. So basically, all that money that is in the account right now is actually、uh, the profits that I've gained.、Um, I think I picked up probably 852 pips on it. You know,、um, when you don't have a large trading account and you're trading standard lots, you know they're worth ten dollars. Pip is worth ten dollars. So 852 pips in one trade is quite a financial gain. That's what he actually brings, to, I think, to many:、uh, the calmness. You know, with the、uh, don't worry. You know.、Uh, Believe what you're doing and just、um, and analyze it, you know, and the way I do, and、uh, and see if it works. And he, we must say, you know, his、um, his、uh, his results, you know, are also showing that、uh, that it works. So so that's fine. I think that's that's great. And I'm looking forward to to、um, to even work even more with him. You know, I just follow what Mark has laid out, you know, exactly for a while and make sure you see how it works because it does work. That's the way to go. There's a better way. In an easier way, and I think that's what resonates mostly with me: a much better way, much less stress, and the proof is in the pudding with Mark.、Um, you know, if, if there's anyone out there who's, who's lost a huge amount of money or, or is down in luck, and he needs something like a lifeline, I mean, to turn his life around, anyone can do that. Anyone. So it represents a lifeline, hope. For anyone who's willing to learn and to apply his methods, I like his recommendations. I like having a safety net. I like having someone to listen to, because you know there's always somebody smarter than yourself. You know, not the、uh, sharpest knife in the drawer, but、um, when I follow somebody who I consider to be extremely knowledgeable and extremely trustworthy. I'm going to stick with him, and that's where I found him, Mark. And I do think that、uh, y'all's program、uh, is definitely the key、uh, to that end result. If you're ready to join, then send an email over to Mark Shawson Elite at gmail dot com with the subject line "Let's do this." I hope you've enjoyed watching this presentation half as much as I enjoyed making it. I'll see you on the other side.